Should we start? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, let me uh, begin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone, to our uh, first academic session of the International Conference on uh, the theme Ram in Art, Tradition, and Literature, being jointly organized by Sachidanand Sinha College and uh, Heritage Society in Patna. Uh, I welcome all of our presenters, speakers, and our ch ch chairperson of this session, Dr. Sunia Jatsukia, Madam, to, uh, to the first academic session. I also request all our viewers on Facebook and YouTube to join the session as soon as possible. Uh, uh, our session will begin very soon. Let me begin. The, uh, let me begin uh, by first introducing Dr. Sonia Jasutia, Madam, who is also chairing this session. Uh, Dr. Sonia Jasutia is a visiting professor and is an ICCR chair at uh, Preya. Sihan of Raza Buddhist University in Cambodia. She has attended more than uh, uh, 20 seminars and workshops and, uh, and has organized several uh, seminars and workshops at national and international level. She has uh, presented 35 research papers in reputed national and international journals. She has also published two uh, books and monographs, uh, which are internationally recognized and has been widely read by all over the all over the uh, uh, in the wide academic circle, she has uh, edited a book on India, Cambodia, and Buddhism, published by Subi Publication Gurugram in 2018. She has also edited a book uh, on Buddhism in Southeast Asia, published by the Embassy of India, Phnom Penh, and publisher is Subi uh, Publication Gurugram. She has uh, published widely in national and international reputed journals, and she has. Contributed widely in the academic field and has uh, contributed to more than 20 different papers. Uh, uh, I welcome you, ma'am, to the first session. Uh, we have with us also uh, six presenters today. Uh, we, uh, we have in the order Professor Sahit Tegu Vidadu from Indonesia, Dr. West A.S. Uh, from Kerala, Mr. Manath Kumar, who is joining very soon, uh, Mrs. Mercy Datta, Mrs. Sulan, Mr. Sulan Das, and Ma Achna joining from uh, Indonesia. I welcome everyone. Uh, I now request Dr. Sonia Jasutia, Madam, to chair the session and begin the session. Thank you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone uh, from the Heritage Society and uh, the College. Uh, for inviting me in a, such an interesting uh, conference, which uh, the on uh, the topic the topic is Rama in art, tradition, and literature. This is our first academic session, as uh, our uh, Mr. Azad told us uh, that we have six uh, scholars from different countries. So I am taking permission to start our session. So with all the, uh, I'm starting with all your permission. So the session, in this session, we have uh, our very first presenter from Indonesia University, uh, Professor Shahid from Urni Ferat Titas Sevlas Marath University, Indonesia. I welcome you, sir, to present your paper, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sonia. Uh, in this uh, session, I'm very honored. Eh? It's very honored to me and very proud to be able to join in this uh, forum. Uh, uh, my name is Sahid Teguh Widodo uh, from uh, University Center of Excellent Javanology for Javanese Tradition, Universitas Sebelas Maret, Surakarta in Central Java, Indonesia. Uh, I want to uh, give high appreciate uh, to uh, uh, Sakir Danan Sinka College, yeah, uh, constituent of Magad University in collaboration with Intangible uh, Culture Heritage Department, Heritage Society in Patna. I already come to Patna. Yeah. And special thanks to Mr. Azad, yeah, my friend, I feel happy and always missing. 
having come to Patna, Alanda University and Bodhaya. So very, very special place. In this seminar, uh, my title is The Javanese Life Spirit of the Sinta Character in Kakavin Ramayana. Next. Uh, next, please. Okay, uh, I will start uh, from a brief story about the Kakavin Ramayana. Ladies and gentlemen, there are still several opinions from historians and literary experts. When was the Ramayana story, especially Ramayana Kakavin, come to Java? Hearing from the expert, uh, Professor Kern, Coach, Moons, Joinbo, Hoikas, Dr. Sunarti, and Uhlenbeck is all different. The Ramayana story entered from Gujarat and the South Indies, uh, from this uh, expert, in the 19th, 9th century during the Srivijaya Kingdom. Archaeological evidence was obtained from the relief of uh, the Prambanan Temple in Central Java and the Panat Panataran Temple in Blitar, East Java. In the uh, 6th to 12th centuries during the heyday of the Majapahit Kingdom. Thanks. Uh, Ramayana. Ramayana, uh, I think, uh, it means the path of Rama, the story of Sri Rama life journey, and the second meaning is uh, the teaching of Sri Rama. The main versions of the Ramayana in Java, Indonesia, is a creation of Valmiki, or I always talk, uh, call Valmiki, who lived in early first century. The beauty of the Ramayana coach, the attention of many scholars. Ramayana is seven books and 25,000 stanzas, and translating into different languages to make it easy to understand its values. The big name of Sri Rama can be found in Malaya, Malaysia, and Nusantara, Indonesia. Uh, in the book of uh, you can call Hikayat Sri Rama, Srat Rama Jarwa, atau, uh, or Javanese Indonesian, yeah, Rama Kling, and many more in Wayang Kulit performance. The old Javanese Ramayana was known among the royal elite in the archipelago since the 10th century. Next. Uh, the Kawin Ramayana. The Ramayana story, you know, have many versions. The oldest Kakawin Ramayana we have found in this work of Yogiswara, uh, 903, the sources of writing the Pati Kavya uh, with the Sanskrit uh, language written in Kashmir, 5th century. Kakawin Rayana does not include Palmiki, first book, I mean Balikanda, and his last book, uh, Uttarakhand. Others' version of Kakawin Ramayana found in Indonesia, including the relief of Prambanan and Pranatran temples from Srat Rama, Uttarakhanda, Uttarakhanda Jawa, Rama, Srat Kanda, and Ramakali. Next, the poetic genre of Kakawin Ramayana was written in uh, 820 to 832 Saka in the era of Raja Diyah Balitung, who ruled in uh, Hindu Mataram. Kakawin Ramayana, which presented in Jawa Kuno, or Old Javanese, has very strict rules or matters for Indian literature. Jawa Kuno is the language used in literary works in the form of Arwa, Kakawin, Kitu, or Prasasti in the 9th to uh, 15th centuries. And the exist, existence of Kakavin Ramayana's background story has clearly showing that the, the characteristic of India and not Java. It's very interesting. Next, all Javanese Ramayana Kakavin was arranged in uh, 2830 stanza, which divided into six, uh, 26 stanzas. 
Ramayana Kakawin is a shorter than the Sanskrit Ramayana. In terms of story content, there are also fundamental differences. The first one is in the Sanskrit Ramayana, Sinta or uh, Sita parted with, with Ramayana after returning to Ayodhya. But in Kakawin Ramayana in Java, the two characters continue to unite and gather together. There are allegations that the Kakawin Ramayana has been adapted to local Javanese values. Next. Why Kakawin Ramayana? Kakawin Rayana, Ramayana is the most popular old Javanese literary masterpiece until now. The expert not only reads my student and my friend, my colleague, it's not only, but the studying and discussing the contents became an inspiration among Kavi literary experts, transformed into other forms of art, namely uh, performance art, painting, sculpture, and others. And we can see Ramayana in the form of Lontar is the longest Kakawin. Kakawa, Kakawin Ramayana is one of the highest quality works put in the term of language and literature. Kakawin Ramayana is a first class literary work. Next. Sita or Sinta. I find many things and ask a question. Sinta with me means what? Cool, cool, reverse, calm. Sinta was daughter of Devi Partivi. I, I take it from Ramayana Kakavit, who was found and later adopted as a child by King Janaka of Mantili Kingdom. Image of Sinta in old Japanese Ramayana Kavin. She is a devi, a goddess. Being a female, yes. Based on the reading of Ramayana Kavin, we find this description Sinta in old Japanese Kavin Ramayana text as follows. Next. Beautiful woman descended from Devi Sri. Uh, this is, uh, I, I will write uh, uh, a part of uh, 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 Ramayana Kakavin too. Sinta sedenya matu nuni laras tulurnya kandewa dita etika pinarka yaringnya. When Sinta was born, or formerly, her afterbirth was in the form of an excellent bow. San Ramenu Jaran Barat Vinara. Ya, wah, ini randewa. Hinarayana, Hiragutma, Aman, Badekwa, Wakta, Hidem. Dan Hian Wisnu Keta, Kita, Riyan Ama, Sinta Sira Srima. God Siwa, Tuh Ramayana, That he was fake and dite. Hei Narayana, You must know that, You are both at the peace. You are God Vishnu and your consort Sinta is in fact the goddess Sri. Next. The holy and powerful woman. Ada Rita Duniran Paramas Satya, Paramas Satya, Satya, Risan Hyang Apuinda Tan Agesen Manah, Nin Umulat Juga Sirna Gesen. When the ultimate loyal one divided into the fire, he was not burned, but the herd of this looking were blessed and turned to us. And next, an irritable woman. Ikana anan ananmu risirat raguputra nihan mantisira denikan meregas denya. Sabagya, teman, tumiliha takurin janakara, janakara jasutaku, basa, siapa sarannya tanhana wane aku nidunihan. You think about Raguputra like this, let him be killed by the deer. It will be very lucky. I will take this place and marry Janara Jasuta. Who will be here, her protector? 
no one else expert me ex accept me you say you said that this to yourself it's not you next uh next uh five zero five next next the woman who likes beauty Marakata warna ramya mangkirista gigirnya katon. Ikana wulu ya nyawaknya malenis ya kabeh mas. Aben teka ya masori sanjanaka raja suta ya mas. Tadi giri kini ranjiran hati nirad, niraduta denya jenek. His back was shining brightly. Beautiful and smooth. The coat of his body was radiant. He see her, she came near the place where Jana Rasuta was resting. She became existing, exciting and surprised because the deer was so tame. Next. And ladies and gentlemen, so we try to see the moral value of uh, Kakawin Ramayana. The first one is introspection. Sita or Sinta did an introspection by cleaning herself first before meeting Rama again. Second, love and loyalty. Sita or Sinta, who loved Rama very much, suffered greatly from being spirit, separated by great distance. He was emaciated because he, she never wanted to eat, sleep on the floor outside the palace and always cry because she, not he, she thought of Rama. Love and loyalty. And the third, respect to the others. When Sita was disappointed and humiliated because it turned out that Rama did not accept her, and even considered her dirty. But she understood Rama's meaning and respected it by having to clean herself first. And the fourth is patriotism. When Sita ordered Laksmana firmly to help Rama immediately, who he thought was in danger. This is for the value. So next. Social value of Ramayana. The Kakawin Ramayana text shows the social pattern of Japanese society and the original values in the grand storyline of the Ramayana and Sita stories. This may happen because the copying process of Ramayana, which was done in Java and naturally obtained the Javanese influence from the others. Generally, these uh, social values are the first ones fundamental value social value that have a fixed character and uncharging unchanging sorry the second instrumental value further elaboration of basic social value of fundamental value in a more creative and dynamic manner the third is practical value the realization of instrument value in the form of experiences that are real in every day life. Next. Ladies and gentlemen, I try to make a table like this. Column one is value, column two is term, and three, uh, man behavior. Fundamental value consists of confidence. Determination, durability, and pride. So we're trying to uh, be a main behavior. The number one is pure practice, highest and absolute. The second is ethical morals. The third, and the truth that comes from knowledge and beauty. And the fourth is please out. The value of instrumental. We can uh, consist uh, from creative and dynamic, and the, in the main behavior, of humanity, and the two is try and move. 
Sita uh, and uh, Rama always try and move to uh, uh, take back uh, Sita from the enemy. And practical values uh, work useful for others and main behaviors is live life well. Next. Okay. The last. I try to make uh, a figure like that. The social value of the Kakavin Ramate can be formulated like this. A, B, C, D, E, F. The A alone or God. And B is moral. C is the truth. D is beauty. A, A is humanity. And F is life. And I'm trying to make a scheme. Sinta in Kakavin Ramaya. Sita is the main character who has many values of uh, kindness. We can see from the body, um, the spirit from the perspective of micro and microcosmos. Society, I mean, and from uh, especially in the in the devotion of God. So, uh, okay. So this uh, six item, uh, this uh, no no, uh, six item, are always talk uh, by Japanese people in my society, and always teach in the family, in the society. You can, uh, you can, uh, you can come in my country, in my, in my society, and you can feel six items that I take from Sita in Kakao. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And good afternoon. Thank you, Professor Said. Unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shahid. It was a wonderful, wonderful yeah. presentation. And I think I will give the remarks later when uh, we will conclude it. Uh, before that, I just wanted to invite doc, uh, second speaker, Dr. Vaisak AS from Narayana College, Kerala. Dr. Vaisak, please welcome. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Hello. Please start. Ma'am, can you see the PPT? Yes, we can see the PPT. Yes, okay. Okay. Respected Chair Professor Sonia, fellow presenters, uh, I am Dr. Vaishak from the Sri Narayana College, uh, Trivandrum, Kerala. Um, uh, my topic is on situating Rama in iconography, a study on Travancore wood carvings. So, uh, first of all, let me take an excuse that uh, I am just a historian and I'm not uh, so much inclined to uh, iconographical studies, but yet since I am interested, I tried to present a paper in this one. And the main uh, intention behind presenting a paper is that to take it to a fact that many of the wood carvings which are still uh, hiding in many parts of uh, India and also in Kerala uh, and the Tamil country are being neglected and they are in the big of destruction. So uh, it is an effort for from a part to speak to the world how this uh, kind of a treasure uh, gives an uh, aesthetic sense and also what was the intention behind its formation, uh, what was the aesthetical sense and moreover uh, how, um, why uh, these were created and moreover what 
or the needs that personally the, uh, it has to be done for its conservation. Actually, the temple architecture uh, in Kerala is largely based on wood because wood was largely available uh, in the southern areas. And uh, already we know about the Ramayana. Ramayana, there are, as the first speaker has told, there are innumerable variants of Ramayana. And in the southern region, or Kerala and Tamil Nadu, as we the following the Kamba Ramayana or the Rama Avatara uh, is being is uh, largely yes, uh, Rama Avatara is largely uh, sung and it has uh, just half of the verses of. Uh, Valmiki Ramana 12,000 verses, and uh, the last uh, the difference is that there are metrical differences, the uh, differences, etc. And the last chapter of uh, uh, Uttara Kantham is uh, uh, is not present in that. And uh, Kambar is associated with the uh, tribe family, it was the one which preserved this heritage of uh, Ramayana and panels. Uh, who, uh, <coughs> Travancore is situated in the present uh, district of Kanyagari, uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, regarding this Ramayana in the south, we have uh, information about uh, the story of Ramayana uh, from may, many ancient references. Uh, also, that Tamil lands uh, even before the common era. The Sangam literature, the Agadanur, the Puranur, the Silapadigaram, Manik Mekhale, etc., too, gives information that uh, Ramayana was known uh, age before it was largely when the Bhakti, just before the Bhakti movement has uh, spread in, uh, in South India. Moreover, Jainism had also an affiliation to Ramayana. Bhakti movement, uh, Vaishnavism, which had strong root in the Tamil region, which encompasses the former states of uh, Kerala and uh, the Tamil Nadu. We don't say Kerala and Tamil Nadu. It is the uh, Malabar and the Tamil country. Uh, the Alvar literature, especially the Alvar, 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 Tamil, etc., has given detailed uh, description and hymns about Rama and his avatars in uh, their uh, renowned books. So this Ramayana, this sect of Vishnu or Vaishnavism that got divided uh, in the later stage as Vadakale and Tenkale or the Northern school which was situated in Kanchipuram and the Southern school which was based on Sri Lanka. So the Sri Lanka school which uh, was a major center uh, the, uh, the, uh, the greater aspect of Ramayana and the stories of Ramayana in the Tenkali sect was much adopted to the spread of uh, spread in the southern district. Uh, with regard to Kerala, uh, we have a separate since Ramayana uh, was so much uh, intertwined with the culture of uh, Kerala. The, uh, there is a month being dedicated. That is the Ramayana month, or we called it as Karkidagam, from July to August, from 16th July to uh, 16th uh, August. This is a time when uh, the rejuvenation of a body and the mind takes place. Uh, so the Parayana or the reading of Ramayana, especially in most of the houses, takes place during this time. So this is in part, in fact, a especially created a cultural uh, cultural aspect wherein uh, the impurities of the mind uh, or the uh, a, a reorganization of a person's character are being carried on during this period. So it has a both positive, uh, both uh, physical, uh, sorry, the spiritual and uh, 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 philosophical aspect. Then coming into the wood carving of Travancore. It is one of the most interesting expressions of uh, art crafts found in tem Hindu temples in Travancore. And uh, largely the concepts of religion and significant events are given. The main aspect is that the central figure in a work to its remotest and accessory. 
there is an observable gradation and a clear boundary so nothing of or no there is no blurring of relatively insignificant items so if you see the carving of travancore travancore uh, was uh, the principality uh, of uh, the southern principality of kerala modern kerala uh, kingdom and with regard to the wood carving there was no blurring of even the insignificant items this this aspect can be noted in the wood carving that i i would present in the later slides this is realistic in the term and moreover completely objective it's mystical and uh, tangible expression of intangible ideas also are given the it is also aesthetic city uh with regard to the art of uh, wood carving it is practiced in uh, the tamil country uh from uh wood period in uh, the temples the temples the palaces mansions the live of the temple cars we can see several temple cars being pulled out of uh, famous temples in procession and mandapas and the shrine so doing due to the availability of uh, abundant uh, timber it was and uh, with of various kinds it was able for a craftsman of a skilled craftsman with great much of imagination and creativity to scoop out the larger aspect of whatever he thinks uh, can be carved out the major uh, ones are the puranic scenes which are largely seen in south india are bhagavata ramayana mahabharata and halasya mahatmya and these bold boldly designed ones are expressive of high emotions which are throbbing having throbbing life and vigor and having mental concentration and also an expression of meditative subtlety and uh, if i say with regard to travancore there was also a chariot a golden chariot which was for which was dedicated which was built for uh, the music uh, prince maharaja swadhi tirunal uh, which was it is still existent which is an incorporation of uh, western and oriental influ uh, influences uh, the art of wood carving began to decline from the 19th century and this it became less artificial and less vivid and so less delicacy in detail the art and artists uh, were exposed to many fluctuations and there were uh, arrested development there was a loss of original vigor and versatility the loss of patronage is a major factor loss of opportunities and loss of individual freedom and therefore there was no sticking into uh, into tradition based uh, uh, occupation now coming into the sri ramaswami temple at patnabapuram where uh, 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 which forms the base of the study where ramayana uh, is being carved was carved throughout the temple so this capital this was the initial patnabapuram was the initial capital of the travancore uh, kingdom and uh, we could see uh, a fusion of shaiva and vaishnava uh, worship uh, within the temple within the palace and uh, this temple uh, sorry this temple was constructed by marthanda verma the maker of modern travancore and uh, why it was constructed is a different thing it was a it was a signaling of the triumph of the king in quenching the revolts and bringing of peace and prosperity so through this he was before him that the kingdom was in anarchy and he unified the kingdom till kochi uh, annexed the kingdom to kochi and there was lot of bloodshed so what happened after this was dedicated kingdom to lord banapha also he banapha uh, prevent activities and the largest pressure in the world i see if you would know then moreover he also built he this was a starting of the concept and he wanted to make a concept clear in the minds of people that the the, the rule uh, he is going to be a just a rule a ruler and there comes a period and era of peace and prosperity hereafter so this uh, 
temple has a, a image an ideal of idol of uh, kodandarama of 6 feet tall with lakshmana on his right and hanuman and sita on the left uh, lakshmana hanuman and sita are of panchaloha and uh, hanuman the special aspect is that hanuman is seen Uh, about four feet tall, Hanuman is seen in extreme bhakti bhava, the humility and dasya bhava as a servant, as in servitude, closing his mouth uh, with his right palm as a servant. So throughout this, sorry, throughout this uh, temple, you could see on the last, on the right, uh, right end, that there are carved uh, the forty-five uh, thousand. in the 45% lamps in the wooden frame encircling the temples then the major aspect is that which you could see on the bottom is that engraved entire ramayana in 45 panels forming decorative ornaments of the eaves the finest available example of the 18th century art of wood carving or wood sculpture so this is a remarkable it suggests a remarkable fertility of imagination and an acute feeling of for form so this enormous length of work it is an epitome of visual subject matter the major aspect is that the frieze has no background save where which such is a part of the scene delineated or a sky over a distance background is pierced out you could see the background is pierced out it is hollow so that would uh, would have a projecting feeling of uh, the frieze and the appearance of an enormous length of frieze work now before coming into the detail of these panels i would also uh, take you to another uh, image of rama which is a unique one is preserved in the, the museum of the padmanabha swami temple is that it a, a temp uh, a idol of rama which is about a, a human size one uh, <laughs> which was in the palace of uh, on uh, swati tirtha okay this exquisite uh, a image is uh, it's the craftsmanship in precision elaborately carved costume realistic facial expression and executed with palm realism so this is an uh, impression giving us rama as in this heroic worship okay then uh, ayodhya it has already been said that in sri krishna in bhagavad gita says uh, rama shastra bhratam aham i am rama among the warriors so rama as a warrior or a hero is being worshiped in kerala or south india as such saint tyagaraja himself in his uh, Uh, in his kritis had given explicates extreme bhakti where he gives an image of kodanda rama with rama with a bow and arrow is a kodanda rama karamuna sara kodanda kanita tharini taneyadu bewitching with the shining row bow and arrow accompanied by sita is that to know about the kodanda rama you have to read the Ayutthaya Kanta of Ramayana. What Bhagi also describes Rama to appear in the uh, battlefield uh, uh, with the Thanu. Similarly, uh, Muthu Swami Dikshitar in his famous uh, Pallavi Sri Ranga Pura Vihara Jaya Kothanda Rama Vatara Rakhuvar Sri Ranga Pura Vihara is also uh, uh, an uh, imaginary of uh, how rama is being uh, seen so this is the image of rama uh, of kodanda rama which is crafted only in a single piece of wood the slightly you know uh, it is a slightly under human size and an exception of uh, loosely hanging ornaments and weapons carved out in single piece of wood is heavily ornamented standing rama depicted holding a arrow in his right hand and while the left is raised up and the palm folded resting upon the dhanus the dhanus uh, actually uh, that has uh, got damaged and he was now placed in his shoulder actually this comes near his feet uh, and holds the dhanu uh, by the hand 
so this bit damaged the black complexions and gold painted attires is adorned with kirita mukuta chenariva armlets necklaces ear pendants bracelets girdle he also wears a small hanging garland his bow and arrow symbolizes righteousness and ha- and a royal panoply a symbol as a symbol of good governance and since this this is a there is an aspect that this wo- this image was kept in the private room of swaji tirunal because swaji tirunal maharaja of travancore was a renowned musician a composer and an artist and he was just as as regarded as a ruler of a just and very popular ruler with uh, great administration skill so this has some sim type of symbolism with this character and uh, so he is being equated with rama by the people and also the royalty uh, so this is uh, the iconography of rama the kodant rama with his uh, uh, bow and arrow uh, now let me take you to another mural which is uh, preserved murals are also since i, I am talking about uh, wood carving i had given an aspect regarding the murals also which are being faded in my abstract so there is an um, an unique mural wherein you could see the royals worshiping uh, sri rama or witnessing sri rama patta vishega or sri rama's coronation the mural is faded but we could make uh, the subjects clear uh, the characters in rama sita lakshmana hanuman and also royal ba- ladies on the background and green skinned rama is seated on a small pedestal with a canopy held by lakshmana rama is crowned with a jeweled crown and is heavily ornamented on left hand holds a bow in horizontal position such as on the <coughs> that of the bow on his lap here there is a profuse use of depicting the ladies and even goddesses in sari is evident that means it has been created in the late uh, sorry in the 17th 18th century in the 17th century uh then hanuman is also seen this is the mural rare mural which is a very large uh, mural uh, and is in the private residence of uh, the ro travancore royals but it is fading unfortunately on the right hand side uh, you sorry left hand side you could see uh, the depiction of the royals uh, worshiping or uh, witnessing the patapishega this is the right hand and zoomed image with uh, the first one uh, uh, the beard one is uh, martha and varma about whom i had told that uh, he was the mother of make of uh, modern travancore so there is a correlation they were the travancore royals are trying to correlate uh, their rule or as just as the rama's uh, just rule or rama's kingdom where there is no uh, no problem or there, there is no type of any misery as such see now coming into in detail of uh, the uh, panels in the sri rama temple at padmanabhapuram you could see uh, these are the panels uh, you could see the extreme realism that we, which is ordered uh, in this uh, one that uh, the you know, gods are uh, praying to uh, shiva and parvati the ganapati is also seen standing kailasa up sitting upon the kailasa the brahma is uh, seen on the left and he is praying along with him are other goddess indra uh, and uh, the surya and the rishis etc praying for uh, his uh, for a solution for adharma being uh, occurring in large scale in the earth so they uh, shiva asks the gods to see uh, vishnu he is seen as uh, uh, padmanabha or shayana it is a shayana murti uh, laying upon the ananta so the precision of uh, each of the minute details is very much seen the shankha chakra are, are symbolized with the Uh, emblems or the symbols then comes then the 
the birth of rama the three wives of dasharatha giving birth are being nurtured the cradle is seeing they are being <coughs> uh, being slept off then their tutelage uh, with vishwamitra see you can see the palm leaf they are writing in palm leaf sitting on the ground uh, studying and uh, on then going uh, studying archery going to hunting uh then vishwamitra comes and ask uh, dasharatha for the help to conduct the yaga and takes uh, rama and his brother uh, to protect the yaga you could see on the bit in the middle that uh, the war between rama and tataka tataka is seen with extreme ferociousness uh, her attributes are also seen and uh, on hitting rama's uh, aro she fell uh, falls down then comes uh, uh, sub um, subahu next uh, on the down side is subahu who is pouring or disturbing the rishi's uh, yaga pouring uh, water into the yaga agnis and he is also been killed and thrown uh, into the then to revenge his uh, death his brother marija comes and marija is also uh, wounded and he is thrown out to the ocean the ocean is seen as uh, uh, with a river with vicious then comes the ahilya moksha seeing rama raising his leg and giving moksha to ahilya but then rama and the entourage travels to janakapuri meets janaka he uh, and uh, vishwamitra asked to take the bow the bow uh, is being broken and the marriage with uh, sita is uh, is on the down on the below you could see pani grahana they are taken uh, in procession to ayodhya with all the entourage and you could see the elephants and uh, the ratha the the horses etc then comes uh, dasharatha blesses rama however on the below you could see the plot of uh, mandhara and kaikeyi uh, unfolds her hair and lays and asks dasharatha about her wound uh, boon and ask rama to go to forest and hand over the administration to parada dasharada falls ill as in shock and obeying this rama goes to the forest you can see a very nice uh, sculpture of rama being taken into uh, in the river sarayu now the charadha is dead uh, and his funeral uh, is being displayed once again arada with all their entourage with the mothers go and asks meets rama in uh, chitrakoot pleads him to return but he doesn't he gives asks for his sandals and the sandals are being given to arada they return back and the sandals you could see on the bottom the sandals are placed on the throne and and and, and is worship then comes the fight between rama and certain demons um churphanaka comes and meets rama he asks to meet rashmana and uh, then uh, she is the episode of uh, of cutting her nose and uh, the and breast is seen she complains to ramana there appears ramana he complains to ravana and uh, the typical aspect of uh, every uh, hands and heads of rama ravana is seen with great precision here we could see a very nice uh, uh, picturization of uh, marija disguised as a deer golden deer and coming to see the and uh, <coughs> rama killing marija the spots of uh, the deer is also seen within uh, this uh, uh, panels 
Ravana abducts uh, Sita in his Pushpaka Vimana. Jadayu uh, put the Sita in the Ashoka Vanika. Hanuman meets Rama. Sugriva and Hanuman discusses aspect. Now is an important aspect of how uh, um, Sugriva uh, uh, fights with Wali and Rama helps him by hitting in a single arrow uh, being uh, hidden in the, beside the trees. You could see a very nice depiction of this. Now uh, that uh, Sampradi, the brother of Jadhayu, describes all the matters to Rama. Uh, Hanuman leaps into Lanka in a single stroke. He meets uh, Surasa, who obstructs him. And he passes through her mouth and ears and getting out of this, this given in the spinals. He was uh, stopped by Lenka Lakshmi and he beats on her face is given. Rama, the entire Ravana family seems sleeping at night. Then Hanuman uh, reaches uh, Ashoka Vanida and finds uh, Sita who is seen with uh, her hair unflawed. Uh, Ravana meets Sita and requests her to marry him but she denies. Then uh, you could see uh, Hanuman giving her the Mudra Motira. Hanuman distracts the Ashoka Vanida, uh, Vanika and then he has a tug of war with uh, the army uh, and again he is captured and brought to the Darbar of Ravana, you could see. He sets fire to Lenka on the bottom. This is the formation of uh, the, the bridge. Doctor, yes, ma'am. Yeah, Dr. Vesa, can you wind up? Yes, yes, yes. So you could see all these episodes uh, within uh, mm -hmm. this aspect uh, of uh, Ramayana in these panels. It's it end with uh, end with. Uh, the Pattabhishega and it is uh, a very important aspect that these are not being uh, being actually conserved and uh, why uh, this is important is that when connecting to uh, royalty Marthanda Varma describes is he is also trying to project his just nature to the people and he proclaims that he has stopped the bloodshed. He is going to be a Mariyada Purushottama and an era of peace and progress is being born. The impact is that he tries to, uh, tries to impart the social and moral value to the people. So he is being, being idealized as an ideal king which is equated to Rama. That is why he has built the Rama temple in, uh, in uh, Padmanabhapuram. So this is uh, this has a very much affiliation to such a long-standing tradition of religious art and uh, sculpture in Travancore, and it has placed in the apex of historical and archaeological deliberation. It has an incomparable imaginary in inclusion of daily events, subjects, and life situations. So these are being crumbled, and you could see this within these panels and prone to weathering and i request if there is any option of this one there needs a, uh, a conservation or a documentation of all this uh, aspect of ramayana and it is the only uh, work other than the other one smaller one in travancore available with ramayana in its wooden paneling thank you so much thank you dr vesa for a wonderful presentation. Now uh, we will start with our next presenter, Mr. Amar Nath. Mr. Amar Nath is there? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Please start your presentation. 
Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I thank the Heritage Society and for uh, giving me this opportunity. I pay my respects to the chair and I extend my wishes to all the participants here. Yeah, do you have a you know share screen? You have you have a slides or something? You want to yeah, share? Yeah, I have a something? PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. please. Ma'am, are my slides visible? No, we cannot. I'm not, you know, I'm not able to see. Okay. Mr. Azad, if you can help, please. Um, hello, uh, Mr. Amarnath. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, there is an option share screen in the bottom of your screen. Uh, click on the yeah. option share screen. Okay, I have done that. Uh, uh, then, then there is a pop up window which is asking again to share screen. Click on that. Yes, after then there is a, a new window open up. Hmm. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, then there yes, is a new sir. window there which asks you there are ah, three yes. options uh, the first one is uh -huh. your entire screen click on, click on your entire screen yes then in the after that uh, you you must be able to see your screen click on that uh, that i have done your entire screen then, uh, then in the bottom there is a share option click on share uh, but i am not able to do uh, so, so that is not blue. Uh, you have to click on the screen, a, a screen in which you are appearing. You have to first click there in the in the middle part, middle portion, and then share button will become blue. You, cl you click on that. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to do that? Yeah, I have done. Okay. Okay. Yes. Great. Then uh, I go to my open your PowerPoint. Please open your PowerPoint. We will be able to see that. Yeah, I have opened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have opened uh, it. Yeah. Is it visible? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I regret. I regret I took a lot of time. Uh yeah. Once again, good afternoon, everybody. So the topic uh, uh, for uh, my presentation is the contemporary relevance of Ramayana. And uh, this, I thought this is a very relevant topic because uh, uh, we belong to this country and this is the book. This is the story we have been through since our childhood. This is the first story, in fact, we, uh, we listen from our parents. So here I go. So Western culture versus Indian culture, this is the first thing which I've taken up. And here in a world where we are obsessed with Western civilization and culture, we forget to look at the treasures buried in our own house. The Ramayana and Mahabharat are such invaluable treasures we possess and are the storehouses of knowledge and human values to guide us. The classics of Homer and Virgil are still revered all over Europe, but somewhere we have failed to recognize our true value and worth of our Shastras. Uh, I, I have taken this, I wrote this because I feel that the current generation, we, we, we are somewhat ignorant of our, uh, you know, uh, our own uh, uh, culture and traditions. Now, Ramayana, the source of light. The holy book is a source of light which shows us the idealistic as well as realistic approaches without which the onward march of a country is arrested. Most importantly, it gives our society 
a stable spiritual foundation and source of inspiration. This is one messenger which binds our vast numbers together despite the boundaries of caste, space, language which divide us still today. Now, my third one, the chaotic is I'm talking about the current age. And in this is, as we all know, where we are almost, you know, we have been digitalized. We are driven by mundane affairs, the rush to hold wealth, money and power. And, and I feel that uh, we have become utterly selfish and hypocrisy guides us. Our mind and heart are in a state of turmoil. There is no remedial measure to achieve peace and tranquility. People resort to psychiatrists, people, uh, you know, uh, uh, take up yoga and those kind of things. But I feel Ramayana is a Veda, which is one destination for all worldly and spiritual knowledge. Why? Because it is one epic, it is one book, which correlates truth and ethics and also religion and science. It is not a work of mythology, but Ramayana, if seen clearly, then we also find that the logic and rationality which existed in that is that is something incomparable even today the next one i have talked further about the chaotic is the epic emphasizes upon the doctrine that we are all human beings and we have to pass through and encounter the crest and troughs of this world and through its principles ramayana acts as the training ground and prepares the individual soul for its eternal pilgrimage i want to make a point that Lord Sri Ram, though he was the incarnation of Lord Vishnu, but he did not have that divine consciousness. And he existed, he spent his life as an ordinary human being who passed through all the uh, afflictions and turbulence, turbulences in his life, just like a normal man passes through. And this is what we learn from his life, that in spite of all the odds which we face, we life is uh, the biggest experience and life teaches us everything so the chariot of piety depicted in ramayana constitutes valor truthfulness self-control benevolence compassion and much more importance of love according to ramayana love should become the bedrock of social forces evil should not be returned for evil one should be generous sincere broad-minded and liberal in one's conduct and and these three things which ramayana teaches us that not three things i would say that ramayana teaches us to maintain a balance in our life in three things that is artha artha means the uh, the production or the money karma our actions and our religion role of uh, sorry role of Ramayana in world politics. Uh, I found this very important. The political system and government of most of the countries today is plagued by mismanagement and corruption. People have huge expectations from their leaders, but resources, on the contrary, are often used to fill own coffers instead of social welfare. Ramayana is the epic which was written thousands of years back, but it gives us the message through Sri Ram who sacrificed everything for the sake of his people. It is mentioned as well as demonstrated that the state should work on democratic principles and follow the books of governance. The sovereign head of the state should be like Rama or even King Dasaratha, who was magnanimous, affectionate, sympathetic, and virtuous. Message to today's leaders. So the heads of the state, should fight was as per the rules. The law, in fact, uh, the war which happened in Ramayana, Ram tried hard to, you know, avert the war. But then when nothing could succeed, then only he resorted to war. So the heads of the state should fight was as per the rules and treatment of refugees should also be humanly. Patriotism acts as a cementing factor uh, which brings men and women into one fold. And, and the most important thing, that the rule of law, rule of law is above everything, and, and everybody should adhere to the rule of law. Sri Rama himself, he never deviated himself from the dogmas of the law. 
throughout the epic we see that law was his only guiding factor which made him a superhuman the epic carries the message throughout that success comes through perseverance and human values and ideals always dispel the forces of darkness and evil altruism is the highest dharma and welfare for all human beings love towards the fellow beings is what sri ram practices throughout his life a very important point which i find relevant in ramayana is that it abounds in you know the advocation of composite culture and so i have written that article 351 of our constitution speaks of composite culture which promotes basic unity and integrity of the democratic republic of india in the valmiki ramayana we find a comprehensive coverage to this concept developed on a far higher and almost global perspective it was not only sri ram but also his father king dasrat who started the national and human center of public administration now in ramayana if we consider then various types of culture have been demonstrated in the holy book uh, the culture of, you know the love between love where human beings the love love of human beings with animals then the culture of uh the family culture the domestic culture the business culture uh, all such cultures have been demonstrated and what is relevant to note and appreciate is the marvelous way in which all these cultures are woven into a fine fiber of life by the composite personality of sri ram he mingled with representatives of various cultures let it be the kevat let it be the nishad the tribal leader let it be shugreev let it be bali and let it be bibhishan the brother of the king uh, ravana he mingled with representatives of various cultures gave them a human touch making human culture more dignified and even the cultures of the gods and the godmen godmen i have written specifically because the godmen need to be aware that lord himself has promulgated and taught in this world that what kind of culture one should inculcate mother earth and ecological balance i feel this is very relevant today valmiki uses the word madhvi to convey the magnanimity and potentiality of mother earth who produced the darling daughter sita what we need today is not a mansion but man with infinite virtues to promote happy living the only way to protect mankind is to protect the entire chain of life on, on this earth lord sri ram he has stated several times in the epic that man is not the only creature in this earth and this earth is shared not this earth is shared by man along with other creatures and one should have a bon homi and co-relationship with all the creatures and so that this earth is made home to all the creatures and i feel this is very relevant today another one ramayana in leadership and management ramayana delivers an effective lesson on leadership and so was sri ram as a leader who had management skills strategic acumen vision and power to resolve conflict ram as a leader always thought about his team yes it was his team the team of monkey soldiers which led him to victory and 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 he always thought about his team before self through his principles he has elaborated the code of conduct for an ideal leader rama as a leader empathized with his team members whether whenever they were sick whenever they were troubled whenever they were in any kind of adverse condition undertook all risks personally and always led from the front and led his team to victory all these characteristics are so very true today for any leader let it be political leader business leader or any kind of leader so transformational leadership was exhibited by lord ram that is demonstrating through examples taking the lead himself and creating a kind of motivation and enthusiasm in the team in the contemporary world the greatest challenge which man faces is from his own mind the evil lies within our mind man today what we have become is that we have become mentally and psychologically weak and we get shattered easily in the face of difficulties one has to face many difficulties but he we should never be depressed na ab matma nalahina labhya a weak minded person can't realize the atma sri ram's life was full of adversities personal trauma suffering separation from wife 
separation from his homeland, but he remained a fighter throughout his life. And I think this is very important today because uh, what we read in the newspapers, in the news, the, 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 the suicide cases and the cases of depression, which is plaguing the world like an epidemic. I think the, the Ramayana teaches us this, that in spite of all the odds, if one is born as a human, he has to learn, the, learn to fight and be calm and composed. And best sadhana is love. The universal principles of Ramayana can give us a near perfect solution in the contemporary world. It can help us in management and other aspects of human personality. And, and, and the solutions which Ramayana gives are applicable to most people and most situations, including individual life, family life, business life, and in larger dimensions of social and national issues. I once again repeat this point that the most important thing which Ramayana teaches that best sadhana, best worship is to love everybody. To love human is to love God. And finally, I'll say Ramayana is the eternal jewel. Let us follow this holy book, revere it, preserve it, and worship it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amanath. Very well explained the contemporary importance of Ramayana. And now our next presenter is uh, Ms. Mursi Datta from Center for Historical Studies, JNU, New Delhi. Yes. Please, welcome. Thank you so much, Sonia, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. The title of my paper today is Lessons from the Past, a Historical Analysis of Love through Bhavavuti's Uttara Ramacharitam. The centrality of emotions like love and grief to the composition of the Ramayana story makes it one of the most significant sources for the study of emotions in early India. Why I say this is because the very kernel of the Valmiki Ramayana, which is one of the earliest works of creative literature, is based on the idea that the poet Valmiki was emotionally inspired to compose spontaneously a metrical verse, shloka, when he was overcome with grief, shoka, on having been a spectator to the killing of a copulating pair of cranes by a hunter and the lamentations of the living partner for the dead. The study of early Indian history therefore remains incomplete without an investigation of its emotional past and kavyas or creative compositions serve as a keyhole to the ways in which societies of the past experienced and expressed emotions. Additionally, the kavyas also help us to engage with the evidence of the social acceptability of certain emotions and alludes to the ways in which conflicts between social norms and prevailing realities are negotiated. Moreover, we also get to know about the inner world of the author as well as the universe surrounding him through the reading of Kavya's. As it becomes clear from the title of my paper, we will today undertake a discussion of the Uttara Damacharit of Bhavabhuti, an eighth century drama that outlines the emotional experiences of the central character of the drama, which is Rama. In the process, we will address the concept of public and private emotions and also investigate into the possibilities of creation of an emotional community. Scholars like Professor Daud Ali point out that Kavyas emerge as modes of education as well as social construction of an individual. Moreover, the existence of a Kavya meant the existence of a literary public who not only understood these forms, but also interpreted them. While Dr. Ali calls it an interpretive community, I would prefer to use the term feeling community. My preference for the use of the term feeling emerges from the fact that time and again, Kavya poets have specified that the significance of their work was to arouse in the audience sentiments or bhava, and therefore there is a need to shift our focus towards the capability of the audience to feel certain sentiments, the attempts to emulate them and to shape themselves. Bhavaputi as a poet is special to the scholar of history of emotions because perhaps for the first time in early Indian history, there emerged a literature who had made attempts to understand the very core of human behavior and whose conceptions of love came closest to modern day understanding of love. We'll move on to a few technical details about the play. The Uttara Ramacharit is a prakarana, a fictional play with a plot which has been invented 
Utpadya by the dramatist with an emphasis on the sentiment of pathos, Kana, written in the Vaidarbi style. M. R. Kale notes that the edition of the play that we are using for this essay consists of 25 verses. 87 of these are written in the Anushtubha meter, whereas other meters that the dramatist has used include the Shikharini, the Vasanta Tilaka, and the Sharadula Vikradita. We will move on to the special aspects of this play quickly. Bhavabhuti is one of the very few composers in ancient Indian literatures and its history who hints explicitly about the nature of his play. This is visible in the fourth act when lover upholds the following statement. Pranito na prakashitaha tasyepa kopya kadesha sandarbha antirena rasavana abhinyartha kritaha tam cha swahasta likitam muni bhargava va shrijana bhagavato bharatasya muni storya trika Sutra Karasya. The translation is, it has been composed but not published. However, a certain portion of it has been arranged in a different form, full of sentiments and rendered fit for dramatic representation. Bhavabhuti was a very strong proponent of the idea that kavyas as a genre have the potential to contain all forms of knowledge within themselves, which is why he stated that instead of diving deep into the world of philosophy of Samkhya or yoga, and religion, it is better to look at Natakas carefully for their help to give a greater understanding about the truth of life. Bhavaputi also mentions in the beginning of his play that he is composing it for a performance at the festival of Lord Kalipriyanatha, probably in a temple located in Ujjaini. That being given, Bhavaputi must have been aware of the complex demographic framework that would have been composed of among the devotees. He must have therefore attempted to use sentiments that would be common and relatable to all the viewers, irrespective of their social standing. This must have been one of the reasons why he chose the rasa of Karuna instead of Shringara, for the former rasa has a more egalitarian nature and it must have had a greater and wider appeal in opposition to the Shringara rasa, which is much more sophisticated and is probably more accessible to connoisseurs or rasikas. The egalitarian appeal of the Karuna Rasa would have also helped in its emulation in regular life. Moreover, it is the Karuna Rasa that helps to create a sharp distinction between public and private emotions, which is an important aspect of my paper. I would also like to argue that the performance and viewing of drama creates a community of spectators that not only partake in the experience of a common set of ritualized emotion, but also become a part of a fraternity that recognize a set of emotions as socially acceptable for practice in day-to-day -day life. Sheldon Pollock argues that uh, a community for whom a text or literature is produced is structured around, a so structured around as a socio-textual community within which circulates these texts through acts of listening, reading, reproducing, and seeing. These communities then imbibe certain core sentiments or emotions and then come to be formed as emotional communities. Pollock also argues that the Uttara Ramcharit is the earliest Nataka that is based on the Ramayana of Valamiki, and Bhavabhuti therefore must have definitely not let go of this opportunity to imbue it with traits that are unique to him, which is why scholars suggest that Bhavabhuti was the one who introduced a new style in writing literature, which is steeped in sentimentality, which is known as the Bhavabhuti Marga. David Shulman, on the other hand, argues that Bhavabhuti falls within the tr tradition of creation, which is known as questioning Ramayanas, the features of which include the investigation of the weak and not so heroic moments of Rama's life, thereby putting into interrogation the very idea of Rama's heroism. The most prominent example of this is when Lover questions Chandragetu about Rama's use of deception to kill Tataka or Valin. It is in this inherent nature of interrogation that the Uttara Ramacharit assumes the nature of a psychological play. We will now move on to how uh, Bhavabhuti treats love in this uh, composition. There are two forms of love that Bhavabhuti explicitly deals with. One is the love in separation, which is the Vipralamba Shringara. The other is the love in union, which is Sambhoka Shringara. From the earliest acts of the play, Bhavabhuti sets the stage for a delineation of the Vipralamba Shingara moment. Therefore, in the first act, when Rama is posed with the question of whether he should banish Sita or not, he states the following. 
स्नेहम दयाम सचौख्यम सॉरी स्नेहम दयाम सचौख्यम च यदि जानकी आराधनाय लोका नाम मुंच तो नास्ती में व्यथा द ट्रांसलेशन इज एफेक्शन मर्सी एंड हैप्पीनेस नो इवन जानकी आई शेल फील नो पैंग इन एबैंडनिंग इट इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोपिशिएट द पीपल दिस इज अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट स्टेटमेंट फॉर टू रीजन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट रिप्रेजेंट्स टू अस द डूअल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ रामा वन एज द लविंग किंग एंड द अदर एज द एफेक्शनेट हजबेंड एंड हिज a uh, conflict in emotions when he has to make a choice his firm decision to send sita off to the forest was the language of a stoic ruler located within the courtly realm but as soon as he enters the forest looking for his wife he transforms into the loving husband whose separation from his partner is as woeful as death it is the uttara ramacharitam that is able to capture the conflict that ensues between the emotions of an affectionate king and a loving husband and the duties associated with these two roles the uttar ramcharit hints that in the event of political pragmatism overriding personal and interpersonal emotions the conflicts gives birth to emotional dissonance which is visible in the reaction of ram in the forest which is termed as madness by api gold why rama decides to abandon sita is a very important question the answer to which we will probably find in the argument by ak warder he notes that these instances for example killing of shambhuka or the exile of sita are not chance incidents but the preoccupations of the poet with political issues it reflects the reality that public opinion matter greatly for literatures as well as people of the royal court whose careers could be made or unmade by popular opinion ak warder argues that in the historical background of the immense significance laid on the interrelationship among kings and their lesser counterparts rise of land grants to religious communities and guilds and royal power being reliant on mutual fidelities the role of public opinion was significant moreover the author suggests that the dharmashastras of the medieval and the early medieval period reflect a fear of revolt in the face of disregard for institutions that lay our social rules in this case the natural effort of those in power therefore would be to propitiate public opinion that being said now we may move to the uncontrolled and total breakdown of rama an episode which is uh, deeply sentimental and uh, covered by bhavabhuti intensely unlike in the valmiki ramayana in the uttara ramacharit rama's madness or rama's breakdown completely contradicts his nature bhavabhuti from the outset lays before us a character who is capable of this kind of an emotional break- breakdown that he displays however the author warns us that we cannot simply see this as a representation in adherence to theory of aesthetics in fact drawing an example of the bhagavata bhagavat purana scholars like rp goldman have argued that uh, rama's behavior was mimetic in the sense that it served a didactic function to represent what happens one, when one is attached to a woman Bhavabhuti's description of the state of separation and its impact on Rama is intensely poignant and involves almost an extensive and excessive amount of swooning. He retains the core of Rama's suffering depicting the intense lamentations of the protagonist in the play along with intense longing. He like Valmiki underlines Rama's state as madness and uses the following phrase: kashtam unmadam eva. The Monier Williams dictionary defines unmada as a state of being disordered in intellect or distracted to become mad or furious. The nature of madness depicted by a dramatist is different from that of the Adi Kavi. Miss Mercy, yes. you have only 5 minutes. Please wind up. We have yes. only 5 minutes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I'll quickly wind up. This grief arises from the state of suffering and wretchedness due to separation from one from one's beloved. Therefore, Rama now becomes an antithesis of his very core nature. He is a hero that the Nayaka, but now he almost transforms into a Virahini Nayaka. The features of a Virahini Nayaka are sort of visible in Rama's character. So, scholars like Shalini Shah point out that Bhavabhuti's work therefore falls into the character. category of literatures that emphasize on the love tradition rather than the erotic tradition within this love tradition sex and sexuality is viewed as a humanizing interaction 
and not as a violent form of conquest. In the love or prema tradition, therefore, the historian argues that emotional aspect of relationship is placed on a higher pedestal than simply physical gratification. However, I, before I wind up, I also have to mention that Bhavabhuti is very categorical when he warns us to not be overindulgent in the sentiment of love and to still sustain our emotional control. He gives the following phrase. When Tamasa reminds Sita to not be deeply affected by laments of Rama, she states, Eva seva vatse, neitaha priyatama vachaha, snehardra shoka darunaha, etasta madhuno dharaha, chotanti, even so, dear child, these words, though steeped in affection, should not be very dear to thee, but appalling from the sorrow they reveal. They are streams of honey mixed with poison. So conclusively, I would like to say that if we look at the Ramayana tradition and all other retellings of the Ramayana story, we can have a lot of uh, things to carry ahead with us, which includes emotional understanding and ways to manage our sentiments. Uh, Belvalkar uh, underlines that when, whereas Kalidasa suggests Bhavabhuti expresses the character of the latter overcome by the force of passion often weep bitterly while those of the former simply shed a few tears. The statement stands a firm ground in the light of Bhavabhuti being one of the first dramatists in the list of literatures of early Indian history who provided his audience with a limpid delineation of the human condition and underline the characteristics of love as a mental state, which not only strengthens the bond with one's beloved, but more importantly, affirms the relationship with oneself. Bhavabhuti, therefore, successfully presents to us strong examples of human dilemmas and personal battles arising out of conflicting emotions and the failed attempts to suppress them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mercy, for very well explained presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Sujan Das from Banarat Kartik Oran Hindi Government College, Binaguri, West Bengal. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, madam. Am I audible? Am I audible? Uh, yeah, you have to see there's uh, echo in the sound. What is the problem? You know, we can hear two sounds from your side. Uh, Mr. Susan, uh, please take out your uh, microphone. Because of that, there might be two echo sounds coming up. OK, you can start. You can start. Yeah, Mr. Sajjan, you can start. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, respected chairperson. Uh, chairperson. Delegate. Delegate. Uh, uh, and the participant. And the participant. Today, today, my presentation, my presentation is on Rama is on in, Rama the, art in the art of Ali. A study of Rama study of Rama Nath. In Bali, Island, in Bali of Island of Indonesia. Before going to, before going to discuss, discuss the Ramo art, Ramo art, the Iceland the of, Iceland of Bali, Bali, we should discuss, we should discuss the, historical the historical background, how, how Indian culture, Indian culture, uh, mythology, uh, mythology, epic story, epic story. Transmitted in Transmitted the South, in the Asian, South countries, Asian countries, and particularly, and particularly in the Iceland of, in the Iceland of Bali, in Indonesia. Bali in Indonesia. Still, there is a problem. Mr. Azad, please see the problem. Uh, Mr. Susan, uh, please take out your earphone. You can unmute yourself. Uh, 
you can take out your uh, you can take out your earphone oh, okay uh, can you speak something am i audible am i audible uh, okay so can you take out your earphone because of your earphone uh, echo sound is coming up now now, now? clear now clear please, please unplug your earphone if there are two a uh, handphone or a uh, laptop I, you have to switch either one you cannot put two otherwise it will create echo if you're using two mobile phone or two laptops then you have to turn off one laptop or one device uh, it works perfect with one device only Please unmute yourself. Please unmute. Now voice is clear. Now voice is clear. Uh, better than earlier. Uh, I think if you unplug your uh, earphone, then it will be more perfect. I am presenting through laptop. Through laptop. So I think if you are using two laptop, microphone. If you're using two laptop, then please uh, mute the another laptop. Only one thing. And put, put, uh, also decrease the sound to zero. Okay, okay, okay. For one laptop, please decrease the sound. Please decrease the volume to zero and use another only. Only one. Now is it clear? Now is it clear? Ada sir. Maybe put computer still connect now with uh, Wi-Fi. Clear. So, same way, please. So, uh, please turn the volume to zero of one laptop. Now. Now it's is it okay. clear? Okay. Thank it's you perfect. very much. Please apologize, apologize me. You have only fifteen minutes. Okay. Topic of my today presentation: Rama in art of Bali, a study of Ramayana art in the Bali island of Indonesia. Before going to a detailed discussion uh, of Ramayana art in the Bali island, we should focus how Indian culture, myth, legend, and epic story fitted into the South Asian countries. as you know that the rich heritage of indian culture was not only bounded to the indian soil rather transmitted the boundaries of india and reached the south asian countries where indian culture epic stories became embedded into the culture of south asian country today my paper is aim to focus the ramayana art in the bali island of indonesia bali is one among the thousand of island in indonesia that remain predominantly hindu Bali is the only place in the inter region of South Asia where once widespread Hindu tradition remains strong and healthy People of Bali believe Rama as a important person as a almighty king having quality of righteousness in bali rama is seen and story of ramayana is taught to induct the moral values righteousness and discipline uh, in the society 
legend and tales of ramayana became popular art in form of in the heart of balinese people to storytelling story cloth famous puppet shows known as wankliyat dances kachak paintings and folklore uh it is uh, to be mentioned here that if we look the art the popular plastic art or culture stone culture all are concentrated in the capital city of indonesia yangkarta in the central capital of indonesia as my topic is concentrated on the bali island so in my paper i will throw light on visual art and performing art of no stories in bali island visual art forms of ramayana in the bali stick culture uh, comprises story cloth story cloth uh, are made uh, in silk cloth or or in which various ramayana stories embodied and depicted so now see this image the story of cloth story where ram sita lakshmana travel by chariot by then boat in excel when ram was sent in excel another story cloth found in bali in indonesia ramo reject the proposal of shurpanekha ravana se shurpanekha was the uh, sister of ravana disguised herself as a beautiful maiden surprising a servant uh, picture of shurpanekha lowing at the bottom and when ramo rejected the proposal of sarpanekha sarpanekha went to the lakshmana and lakshmana cut off the nose of sarpanekha this this is the beauty fully carved and design of this visual art nicely carved in way and drapery of this uh depiction of the story is truly master price another story cloth from bali this uh, this painting or story cloth shows sita abduction by ravana here in the bottom in the bottom lakshmana found ramo when ramo went to capture golden deer and then lakshmana left uh, lakshmana left sita home and ravana reach to the sita capture sita and in the way ravana returning to the lanka the pongki king intercepted trying to insert intercepted ravana another another story cloth showing the fight between rama and jamo and finally jamo defeated in the hand of 
Ravan. Another slide and most beautiful depiction of Sita's ordeal in fire after returning of Lanka. In this picture, Sita uh, is showing in ordeal in fire. Where from left Hanumano, Ramo, Lakshmano, and others. And the full, this is the full depiction of story cloth. Another form of Ramano art in visual form comes in embroideries of Ramano story in cloth, which is popularly known as Idar Idar, that means temporal cloth, uh, usually used in sacred ceremonial purposes, temples, pavilion, and things personal temples here in this picture this picture showing sita saw the golden deer and suggest ramo to capture the golden deer in the next picture ramo uh, in keep in order to capture sita he changed himself and time to begging from Sita. Rama in performing art. The popular vehicle of Ramayana art, which has been remained alive, active, and has been declared world heritage. Art form. This is the uh, shadow theater through puppetry, popularly known as Young Kulit. Young refers to kind of puppet theater. Sometimes puppet itself is referred to young performance of shadow puppet theater are accompanied by Galaman. Orchestra in Java. Usually, various forms of Ramayana stories are projected through a skin, and behind the skin, a puppet master work. The young Pulit or shadow puppet are without doubt or without voice, best known of the Indonesian young. It means skin. So, refer to the leather construction of the puppet that are carefully shaped with very fine tools and supported with carefully shaped buffalo horn handles and control rods. Element of performance. Fundamental component of, of a performance includes a puppeter master uh, uh, which is known as in in, in balis or uh, balinese people call puppeter master as a dalang or belly ramayana is a popular story to tell with shadow puppet here are some of the character of ramayana uh, this is the puppet show. You can see this string puppet showing the stories of Ramayana, Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana are showing in this screen. Uh, this uh, shadow theater showing a golden deer which was seen by Sita. 
शैडो पापेट थिएटर यंग कुलित शुद्ध प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ शैडो वेरियस फॉर्म ऑफ पापेट्री आर प्रोजेक्टेड इन शैडो फॉर्म यार इस दी इमेज ऑफ रामो रावणो रामो सीता दिस इस दी एपेरेंस ऑफ शैडो थिएटर Mr. Mr. Sujan, please wind up because we are very less tired. Performing yeah. out of Ramayana stories, Kachak dance is a group dance narrating the story of Ramayana. Again, Kachak dance narrating the story of Ramayana. Ramayana ballet uh, is a show that combines dance drama without dialogue with the theme of Ramayana stories. Ramayana ballet. is popular form of performing art in bali island and other part of indonesia this is the here is the few image of ramayana ballet perform the story of ramayana thank you very much thank you mr sarjan last but not the least we have all next speaker ma archana namaste welcome ma'am thank you yeah. nice to see you again uh, respected uh, dr sonia and all the speakers and also the participants and i'm very much honored to be part of this international conference and now i would like to show uh, my presentation mm, hopefully this works we tried it again okay okay hold on see this is the problem with uh, you know uh the since covid right we have to change systems all the time once with the uh, zoom and now with streamyard okay so can you all see my presentation yes we can see yes we can see you can proceed so my presentation is um called ashtabrata eight principles of effective leadership and good governance this is actually based on rama's teaching to vibhishan from ancient indonesian sources uh it is very much interest uh, interesting because now especially in asia we are so much oriented to the western system of uh, education and also uh like leadership theories uh from the west like great men theory or trait theory transformational theory uh, of leadership but actually we do have um the theories of leadership that is derived from ramayan so therefore i would like to just focus on uh this this topic right um many people today feel that indonesia uh, imparted sanatan dharma from india like other religions you know like here sanatan dharma and samskriti is a way of life and even though majority has embraced islam and other religions but the samskriti and dharma runs through our veins why is that because if we go back to the history we see that uh, before we know jambu dwip it was uh, one continental and then of course it was like uh, with the catastrophes and catastrophes and tsunamis and all that climate change and then it became uh, the island of indonesia the archipelago of indonesia it's called swarna swarna bumi or swarna dwip and in ramayan you find it as the name yavadweep if you all remember when uh, sugriv dispatched his armies in search of uh, sita then yavadweep was mentioned and then the classic sanskrit literature around the 12th century uh, then the archipelago was called vipantara and after that again after the 14th and 16th century ce the name became nusantara so the name in indonesia is actually new it's around um, 1884 so i'm taking this uh this 
this topic of the Ashtabrata, the eight, the eight resolution, right? Um, it is taken from the book of my guru. It's actually it's called Ananda's New Self uh, Leadership. It is very interesting because in the olden times, uh, our our uh, ancestors they always like the yogis in yoga. They always observed nature, and so this is the same thing. Uh, this theory is actually the the eldest one is, comes from the Manu Dharma Shastra, but then. In the Kakawin Ramayan, like what Professor Sahid was mentioning, it is also mentioned about the eight uh, eight principles of effective leadership and good governance, what we call the Ram Rajya. So the first one, taken from the, the there are eight elements of nature. So the first one, it is Surya. A leader should shine and share and like with one and all. So it never operates according to likes and dislikes, like rag wish. And then the way they work, it ha they have to be patient. It is like the sun rising until sundown. You know, it takes time to, uh, to, to go through all that. So it is uh, patience. And then the character of the sun is also to educate and illuminate. A leader should have those qualities. And the second one is Chandra or the moon. It takes on the sun's role in the dark. If we know the quality of the moon, it is soft, it is gentle. So a leader, it should be, they should be kind and compassionate and peaceful in the same way so they, they'll be loved by his people. It is very difficult to rule if, you, if we are a leader, but then our people do not like us. And then the third, character that a leadership must have is Taraka or the North Pole Star. As the what we do now, like the sailors, they always use the North Pole to, to guide to guide them for the for the path. And also people who go on camping, they always look for the North Pole Star. And this is also the quality of a leader. They should have this quality. So uh, a leader should be loyal to his position and to be a guide and give guidance, consistent and firm in upholding the law or dharma or justice. Basically, they have to be fair. Okay. And always showing uh, to, to guide their people. And the next one is Bumi or Earth. Like Earth, it gets trampled, she gets trampled. But then she's always kind. Again, it is all like the same quality as the sun. They are patient. Although they are trampled upon, but they don't get angry. They don't get, they're not revenged. And a leader should become the solid ground of the people and give life to his people. So from earth, uh, life grows like plants and all that. And that is how a leader should embrace uh, their subjects. Of people. And the fifth one is Varuna or water. As we know, water flows on, you know, from up to down, never goes from uh, down to up. And, and then also it's making its own way. What does this mean? A leader should also go and set examples to the people. They go to the ground, they go to the field. They're not just sitting in their office and just, you know, uh, being bossy and all that. No, a good leader knows their people. And like water, it spreads and goes down, accessible to his people and set example. And water also has the quality to give uh, uh, prosperity to his people. And also with water, the character of water, even though it's like going with the flow, but actually the, uh, the concept of going in the, with the flow, sometimes it becomes so negative. So going with the flow means like if uh, when we see water, it is blocked by a, a rock or something like that. What it does is it finds another way to go through it. So this is what's beautiful. A leader should have the quality of Varuna or water. And then the sixth quality is Gani or fire. 
character of fire is it purifies and recycles. A fire, a, lead, a leadership uh, has to be, they are warm, but then very charismatic. And fire is also a symbol of full of energy. It gives positive spirit to his people. It does not demoralize, he or she does not demoralize people, but giving good spirit so that they can grow. And the seventh quality is bayou or air. If we see the character or the qualities of air, it has the ability to penetrate anything, anywhere. So a leader also, even though they're not present physically, but the people will be able to uh, feel their presence through his, his or her wisdom and the policies implemented in the leadership, right? And, and also as win, since they penetrate anything, they are also friendly people. And the uh, eighth quality, it is samudra or ocean, vast, all-inclusive knowledge and vision. What does it mean? They have to have a vast knowledge, vast wisdom, vast way of thinking, a vast heart. And like the ocean, it can accommodate uh, many things uh, with the different species that is in the sea. So a good leadership, it accommodates the people's aspirations. It embraces, he or she embraces everyone from all walks of life. It's not this, there's no discrimination whatsoever. And also, uh, with the character of the ocean, the leader with this quality, he or she will have vast knowledge and this vast knowledge will give the leader the ability to make wise decisions. And so those are the eight qualities that was given by Ram to Vibhishan when uh, after uh, Rahwan was killed. So a country without a leader is going to be a chaos. That's why when Vibhishan was instilled there to be the king, Ram, Ram taught Vibhishan how to be a wise king. And all these principles of the eight characters uh, of, in leadership is derived from the local Ramayan in the Kakawin uh, Ramayan, actually. There are also the different uh, differentiation between the, there are, there are also similarities to um, the, the devas, the eight devas, like Indra, Yama, Surya, Chandra, Amila, Kuera, and Agni. But all those gods also have all the same qualities of the eight elements. So that is my presentation uh, about the eight principles of, uh, of leadership and good governance. Anyone who, a leader who implies this eight leadership, principles of leadership, will make guarantee that the country or the, the company that they're leading will always prosper and the people will live happily and good welfare. Therefore, thank you so much. And as we see, all these cultures is in the veins of the Indonesian people, even in the way of life, even in the way we greet each other, like Namaste, it is there, and also in all the ceremonies. That is my short uh, presentation of uh, the eight principles of leadership that, was, that is derived from Ramayan and also uh, good governance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for saving our time, Arjuna. Your, 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 you know, uh, it's, it's like, you know, you have given us life for five, 10 minutes. So thank you, Arjuna, for meaningful presentation. Now, I think uh, we, we are skipping the question and answer time because we don't have time. I mean, we are not uh, inviting any questions. So I would like to give my remarks on, you know, in very short time.
to wind up. So a very first presentation by Professor Shahid. He talked about uh, you know um, the personal life of Sita and personality in Java Ramayana and the uh, difference between the Kakan and Sanskrit language and uh, he explained the Sita's personality in Kakavin Ramayana as powerful and beautiful lady with high moral value, which is shows the social history of Java at that time, which was really, really wonderful for you know uh, Kindly unmute. Somebody is unmute, I think. So thank you very much for your wonderful, wonderful presentation, Professor Shahid. Uh, thank you very much. I've learned a lot about Kakovan Ramayan, uh, which is famous in Java. Our um, second presentation was Dr. Ramayana, a very well presented paper on iconography and very well explained the importance of having a vote. Thank you for wonderful presentation, Dr. Vaisak. And uh, the third presentation was Mr. Amanath. He explained the relevance of Ramayana and the importance of love, action, you know, role of Ramayana in world politics, uh, and how leaders can learn from you know the sacred Ramayana. It, I mean, we can how. How uh, you know Ram, Ram sacrificed everything? The, uh, the leaders of the world can learn so many things from the life of Ram. The uh, next presenter was uh, Miss Marasi Datta. Her uh, presentation was on uh, lessons from the past, a historical analysis of love through. Uh, Bhava Bhuti uh, Uttara Ramayan Ramay, Ramacharita. In, in this presentation, she explained the politics, historical aspects, love, compassion, uh, which is explained in Bhava Bhuti Ramayana. Congratulations for your wonderful presentation. And our next presentation was Mr. Sajjan Das. He explained about the story of cloth, which is uh, famous in Bali. And it shows the rich culture of an active textile artist. These wonderful, colorful pieces of clothes used to, uh, are used in rituals and decoration and offerings and so many other uh, uh, offerings. <clears throat> Very well explained. Ma Archana, explained the Ram Rajya. It is not related to, you know, only religion, but also the quality of leadership that we can learn from Ram, how Ram was. It is not, you know, it is not related to uh, religion, but the relate, uh, it is related to the moral values which we can learn from Ram. So this was all from our presenters. Thank you very much. And congratulations to the organizers for such a wonderful um, online conference. I hope everyone will gain from this, I mean, these efforts. Congratulations once again. Congratulations to Heritage Society. And uh, thank you very much, all the presenters. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I now Mr. Azad, now you can take over. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. I now request uh, Adrija Ji, Virasat Mitra Heritage Society, to present vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, namaskar and uh, Honorable Chairperson Dr. Sonia Jasrothia, ICCR Chair, and Priya Sehanoi. Karaja, Buddhist uh, University, Cambodia. Our most valued invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great opportunity for me to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. Uh, 
I, Audrija Choudhury from Virasad Mitra of Heritage Society of Baroda. On behalf of the Heritage Society Patna, organizers, team, crew, even special guests in the audience and on my behalf, on my own behalf, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers for gracing your important works and sharing with us your findings and opinions today. A big thank you to Professor Sahid uh, Tegu Widodo from Universitas Sibelas Maret, Indonesia, for his effort towards for his effort towards uh, the Javanese life spirit on Sinta character in Ramayana Kakavin. I must also mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Vaisak A.S., Assistant Professor, Sri Narayana College, Kerala, for explanation of situation of uh, situating Rama in iconography, a study on uh, Travancore wood carving. Further. We know we are grateful to Mr. Uh, Amarnath Kumar, Assistant Professor VIPS New Delhi for demonstrating contemporary relevance of Ramayana. I would like to express our sincere thanks to Mr. Sujan Dash for explaining to us Rama in Arts of Bali, a study of Ramayana, art in Bali Island of Indonesia. Uh, I also wish to express my gratitude to Mr. Ma to Miss Marcy Datta, MPhil student from uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, for talking on the topic lesson lessons from the past: a historical analysis of love through Bhavavuti Uttara Rama Charita. And we also would like to acknowledge our gratitude to Ma Archana, uh, chair board of. Trustee, trustees of Anand Ashram Foundation Bali for speaking on Rama Rajya, Rama Rajya, quality of leadership. Well, Madam Chairperson, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and even like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye of uh, for details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues of Heritage Society Patna who know the job and are result-oriented.